Level 3, Key Stage 3, Exam Questions. Now these exam questions don't come in any particular order. They could be number, they could be algebra, they could be shape and space, or they could be data handling. It's just the way they happen. So here we go. This happens to be number we're going to start with. Find the missing numbers. 78 add something is 100. And there's lots of ways of doing these questions as there is all maths questions. But I would say the easiest way would to say if I take 78 away from 100, I'll find what the missing number is. Now we don't know if this is a calculator or non-calculator paper. So let's do it without a calculator as long as we can. So we're going to borrow. 10 take away 8 is 2. 9 take away 7 is 2. So the answer is 22. 20 multiplied by something is 100. Again, several ways of doing it. You could just think about your 20 times table. Can you do that in your head? 120 is 20. 220s is 40. 320s is 60. 420s is 80. 520s would be 100. So that must be the question mark. Another way is to think about it as 100 divided by 20. How many 20s are there in 100? 400 divided by something is 100. We can do that by seeing how many hundreds there are in 400, and in fact there are 4. 4 times 100 is 400. Therefore the question mark is in fact 4, because 400 divided by 100 will give us 4. As I say, these questions can be thought about in different ways, as long as you end up with the answer, that's okay. 85 multiplied by something, which is 2, and then subtract something, which we don't know, is 100. Well, let's do the 85 times 2 first. Now, whether you do this in your head, or write it down like I am, is entirely up to you. That's my carry number there. So I've got that this is 170, take away something, is 100. So in fact it's take away 70. So the question mark is 70. Find the missing numbers. Now we've got some interpreting data. We've got information here about five students. This is the clubs that they do or don't belong to. Tick means they belong to it. Cross means they don't. This is the pets whether they've got cats, dogs, mice or fish, rats, and how many they've in fact got. So there's the data. Questions are on a separate sheet, so let's see what the questions are. A. How many go to the tennis club? So we need to look for the tennis. One, two, three, four go to the tennis club. So it's just a case of interpreting the data to answer the questions. Which club does Nick go to? So we find Nick, and see he in fact only goes to one club, and he goes to the drama club. Who has the greatest number of pets? Well, now we need to look at the other table, and see who has the greatest number of pets. So Sam has got, well if we add that up, that comes to four. David's just got 3 plus 2 is 5. Pam has got 2, 3 and 4 is 7. Glenn's just got 1. And Nick's got 1, 2, 3 and 3 is 6. So by adding up across the page we find out how many pets each of them's got. And we had to find who got the greatest number. Pam has got the greatest number of pets. Now one pupil said... When German last night, when at German last night, my cat had kittens. Who was the only pupil 
could possibly have said that. So one pupil was a German and they got a cat that had kittens. So let's see who that is. So let's first off look at this club's table and see that we've got Sam goes to German club, David goes to German club, so does Glenn. Now which of those three people have in fact got a cat anyway? So this Sam doesn't have a cat, David doesn't have a cat, Glenn does. So Glenn is the only one that actually goes to the correct club, German, and has a cat. So therefore he's the only one that could possibly have kittens when he went home. As I say, these questions are in no particular order, but they're all exam questions from Key Stage 3, Level 3. So now we're back to number. Add the two numbers to work out the number that goes on top. Complete this number pyramid. So if we add these two numbers together, we get the number that goes on top. If we add these two numbers together, we get the number that goes on top. If we add these two numbers together, we get the number that goes on top. Now how you do this adding, there's no worry about the speed you do it, so don't think you've got to rush. So you can do it any way you like, even if it means counting on your fingers, that doesn't matter. Now this question continues, but now we've got the number on top. So these two numbers have to add up to 25. And there'll be many different ways of doing this. Many. I think that possibly 20 add 5 is the easiest. Then these two numbers must add up to 20. So there could be 10 and 10, 12 and 8, 13 and 7. But these two have to add up to 5. So I can't just put to any two down there that add up to 20. If I put 2 there, that gives me 20, and that gives me 5. So there's one of the possible answers. But it does in fact tell me to do it again a different way. So let's have a different two numbers that add up to 25. Let's have 15 and 10. So these two have got to add up to 15, and these two have got to add up to 10. So I've got to be careful what I put there. I can't put 4 there and 11 there. I know 4 and 11 will add up to 15, but then I'm snookered as to what to put into there. So it does need a little bit of thinking about. I'm going to go for 13 there and 2 there, because that will make 15. And 8 there, because that will make the 10. There's lots of ways those pyramids could have been filled in. That's just my choice.